Hi, it's Martin and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today's video is my March wrap up and I did post a photo on YouTube um, on Wednesday afternoon to say that I was going to record a video. I'm not sure whether this is going up on Wednesday or Thursday, depends how long it takes me to edit. Um, but I wish you could see the mess. So go and take a look at the photo on my channel. <laughs> There's just stuff everywhere. I was like, oh, I need to talk about that. Oh, I need to talk about that. So it's going to be a bit of an action-packed edition, I think. I've got loads to talk about and loads to share, which is great. Um, so yeah, welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Lovely to have you here as always. Hello if you're a new viewer who's just stumbled upon my channel for the first time. You are very welcome. I hope that you enjoy what you see. Um, filming light the weather's a bit weird in cardiff today um as i was getting all of my things ready it was bright sunshine and i was kind of angling the camera so that it wasn't in my face and then literally about 10 minutes later we've had the biggest thunderstorm and hails and i'm not sure if the sun is going to come back out or the rain is going to come back but i'm sitting in the window for better light so if it starts battering down with the rain you'll have to just excuse the great british weather I'm hoping I'm not doing this <clears throat> to get the sunlight out of my eyes, but we'll plough on. We will see. You know this is a real life blog. You just get me warts and all as things happen. <clears throat> I've had a bit of a cough. It's not you know what. We went away to Centre Park with all the family and everyone has had it. Um, not sure where we got it from. I think it was one of the nieces, but I got told off for accusing her of being patient X. Um, but we've all had it. So I've got a bit of a cough. So I have some squash here in case I need it for chatting to you. So I hope that you've got a drink. I hope that you've got your latest crafty project, your knitting, your crochet, fibre, spinning, anything that you're currently working on. I think we'll try and keep this under the hour as usual. Um, but let's get straight into it, I think, and see where I keep looking down because there's all stuff here. Let's get straight into it and see where we end up. <clears throat> um, I'm going to start slightly differently this time. I usually start with works in progress, number, then go on to finished objects and then plans for the month ahead um, and acquisitions and things. But I, there's something I just wanted to cover off, kind of like a parish notice. Um, I'm after some support from you wonderful people. So I thought I would get that out of the way right up front. Um, so then I don't forget, which is likely to happen. <clears throat> and there's my local yarn shop. If you've been here for a while, you will know that my local yarn shop is Ammonite Yarns. It's just up the road from me in Ponteclean. I live in Cardiff. Again, if you're new here, hi. Um, Ponteclean is about 20 minutes drive away. It's actually six minutes on the train, but public transport in Wales, don't get me started. I can't really get the train there, so I usually drive. You didn't need to know that anyway. Um, my local yarn shop, Ammonite Yarns, um, Jenny is one of the owners and Jer Jenny is part of the Soroptimist International Organisation and I'm going to pop all their details down um, in the description box below. But they are running a campaign between now and um, I think October, November time um, to make orange flowers. And this is where I want your help. Can you see where we're going? I've made two. <laughs> but let me read out what Jenny has sent me because I would love, I'm, I was tr chatting to Jenny at Knit Club a couple of weeks ago and said, oh, I wonder if I mentioned that on, the, on my next blog, whether that's something that the community here can get involved in and make some orange flowers to send to be part of the installation. So let me read a bit about the flowers. Um, and then that will hopefully explain a bit more about what, what we're trying to do. So Jenny's a member of the Swoptimist International Glamorgan branch, and they're an international organisation which campaigns for women and girls in many different situations. Individual branches campaign locally and join in for national and international campaigns, one of which is the 16 Days of Activism. This is organised by the UN and takes place in November and draws attention to gender-based violence. I've attached a link below, which I'll pop in the description box. And during the 16 days, so optimists try to orange the world. In the past, we've put orange sash sashes 
on statues of women in Cardiff and had major buildings lit up in orange. This year, we're trying to have enough orange flowers made, whether that's knit, crochet, origami, felt, any craft basically, to make an installation to be placed in a public building in Cardiff. We are aiming for the Millennium Centre or St David's too. We'll need a lot of flowers, thanks Jenny. Um, the Millennium Centre is our massive opera centre, opera centre, theatre, opera house, uh, musical theatre venue um, just down the road from me. You may have seen it in some previous videos. And St David's 2 is our big, massive indoor shopping complex. So both huge venues. So this is where, if you wish to get involved, I'm going to pop the details to the Swaptimist International Group um, below. And I'll pop Jenny's blurb and then the details for the shop. And if it's something that you would love to get involved in, you would be more than welcome to help share some Knit365 community love. So the only requirement, as you've heard, is it needs to be an orange flower. If you're a knitter, a crafter, a crocheter, I don't know what an origami person, an origami -er? I'm not sure. I've made two. I did a little one and a big one. Um, and they took me... I think that was about five minutes and that was about six minutes. Um, but no no specific pattern when I was chatting to Jenny. It can be anything you like as long as it's orange. And then I had a brainwave. I was like, oh, I'm sure I've got a book somewhere. You know when you buy those random books when you're out and about and you're like, oh, that's not bad. That's, that's cheap. So I bought this book. Um, there's a book shop in the UK called The Works. And this should have been £14.95 and was actually £4. I saw it, bargain. What did I need it for? Ha ha. I need it for this year's campaign because that's a great. So there are hundreds of flower patterns in here. So between now and the end of the year, I will whip up a couple of these. Probably this um, when I'm at Knit Club on a Tuesday night. It's a really good opportunity to sit down and be part of a, of a community group. Um, a few years ago, we took part in a poppy installation and we all made poppies and sewed them onto vines. And it was really lovely to see that displayed at the Wonderwall Yarn Festival. Um, and that was um, all of the local yarn shops and the, the exhibitors there took part, which was fantastic. So parish notice, number one, got that out of the way so that I didn't forget. So please, if you're able to get involved and you want to um, knit or crochet um, a flower or two, um, I know Jenny and the society would be super happy to take your donations. Um, so please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or pop over on Instagram or Twitter and pop me a direct message if you want to chat about it and have any questions. Um, but yeah, you know, my videos get watched by between three and a half and four thousand, or we get three between three and a half and four thousand views. So even if everyone that watched made one flower, we would be, wow, a huge contributor to their campaign. And we've got such a lovely community. I love... Um, reading your comments and getting involved with people. Um, so I thought that would be a lovely thing. So I hope you don't mind me mixing the video up slightly and starting with that. It kind of could have come at the end, couldn't it? As part of the, what have I been up to, acquisitions, etc. But I just thought I would start with that so that I didn't forget. So there we go. Orange flowers. We'll keep checking in on that over the next couple of months. And I'll find out from Jenny what the deadline is, whether it's like September or October, for example, if the, the exhibition is in November. So I'll pop those details below and uh, thank you very much. So let's get into crafting. So back to normal business, works in progress. I have 14 works in progress. I like to declare, start every video with a declaration. And last month I also had 14, which means I finished things and I've started things. Hey ho, it's coming down. It is coming down, I promise. Um, so, finished objects. We'll come on to the you know what in a minute. Um, I'll briefly mention Snee. If you haven't watched my uh, Imaginist video yet, um, there's a whole project video dedicated to Snee as my entry into the Toft Ed's Imaginist competition. Snee was inspired by a Danish snow king. Snee is uh, snow in Danish. Um, and he's covered in spiky icicles. And he's got this flowing, watery, icy hair. 
that was my theme. That was my inspiration. Um, so I finished Snee. So he is a completed object. And I started and finished him during March. I kind of didn't want to leave my homework to the end of the quarter because it's a quarterly competition. I had the wool in January. I thought about it for a while and didn't actually do anything with it. So a bit of a stress uh, crochet towards the end of the month, but I got Snee done. So I'm not going to mention anything more about him. If you want to know more about him, um, pop back on the previous video and then you can see the whole design process and how I went from a couple of pictures in my book to a finished entry. Um, the judging has taken place. My photo has been liked. Um, if your photo's liked, it's in for judging. If I win, my kit gets or my, my monster gets turned into a kit that is available to buy on the TOF website, which would be amazing. But it, I wanted to do this to be more creative and not follow a pattern and to kind of design my own creation. Because I'm very good at following patterns and following instructions. I'm not so good at winging it. So this was my first attempt at winging it. So I was very pleased. And he kind of turned out how I, how I imagined and how I drew the picture. So there is Snee. And that's all we'll say on him. So finished object number one. Not from Stash. I, had, I, I bought the wool in because I didn't have this tealy colour. There we go. Uh, finished object number two, though, is from Stash, so we can polish the halo. It's all from Stash. I didn't buy any wool for this one. This is my um, third bird for my 12 Birds of Christmas project. So again, a, a toft, toft project. This is the partridge in a pear tree, um, crochet the 12 Birds of Christmas book. I've already done the partridge and the goose. Um, so six geese are laying and a partridge in a pear tree. And this is Agnes the Heron. And Agnes represents 10 lords are leaping. Because look at those legs. She's leaping all over the place. Um, so yes, yeah, so she did come from stash wool, which is great. Um, and I think I said this in the beginning of the year. This is a, a great project for me because it's one bird a month, which is easily manageable. Although again... I stress crocheted her at the end of the month because I didn't get her finished in time. But I got her finished in, in March. Um, but I wanted to do her early in the month and I didn't. But I did use up stash wool, which is brilliant. And that's what I'm trying to do with lots of these birds is that I do them from my stash and I don't buy any wool. Although there are a few that use black and I don't have any black. So I'm going to have to buy some of that. Um, but Agnes is a heron. You can see standard toft bird um, form with the knobbly knees, three feet, a fourth claw, three feet, two feet, three claws, and a claw on the back. You know what I mean. Um, and then she's got this lovely little weird headpiece feather thing and a really long beak. I don't... I, Mark and I were trying to work out the difference between a crane and a heron. I'm not sure. I do need to Google it. But that's Agnes. Um, so I am on track for my 12 birds of Christmas, which I'm really happy with. Um, so we can polish the halo for that one because we've used stash wool, which is great. Um, and I was flicking through the book before I started recording while I was just getting my bits ready. And I think I'm going to make this one next or this one. So we're either going to do Margot the Swan or... I don't know what the other one is. Bear with. So again, I'm thinking of stash wool. So the ones that are in black, I haven't got any black, so I need to buy some. Um, Delilah the cattle egret. She is number eight. So she is eight maids of milking. Um, so there's Delilah. Um, so it'll be one of the two. It will be Delilah or Margot the swan because I've got loads of cream and I'm not sure which one yet. So I'm going to wing it. Probably the egret because I've still got yellow out from... What did I use yellow in? Oh, I made little Easter chicks. Um, so I've got some yellow out for that. I don't have these here. Head to my Instagram if you want to see the Easter chicks. Um, niece 2 had to do a Easter bonnet parade 
and um, my sister-in-law asked if I would crochet some Easter things. So I made two little chicks and a load of Easter eggs. I don't have a picture to hand. Do I have a picture to hand? I might have a picture to hand. Please hold the line caller. Um, and I helped to crochet. Oh. So we've got all these really colorful Easter eggs and we've got the two chicks. So there's a furry chick and a normal chick. Um, I'm one of those weird people that enjoys doing loop stitch. So I just had to do a furry chick as well. Um, and there she is, she's gorgeous, our little Olivia. Niece two, wearing a hat. Um, so that's over on Instagram if you wanna go and take a closer look at that. I was just thinking, why did I have yellow wool out? Um, so I had yellow wool for that. So I'll probably do the egret because the yellow wool is still on the table which you can't see over there, not by there in my stash. We'll do a stash video one day. Lots of you have asked to see it. You can see there's those two crates there and there's another four crates here and all the stash is in there. Um, so that's finished object number two. This video seems really chaotic. I hope you're keeping up and I hope it's okay. You know me, it's real life. You're getting the mad ramblings of my brain today. But there we go, that's finished object number two. And then I'm almost too excited and relieved to show these off. This is technically one finished object because on my list of my works in progress, um, I only ever counted them once as baby blankets, but I am claiming them as two finished objects because there is a lot of knitting that's been in these. So, and uh, we need a thumbnail. This will be the thumbnail because they're done. And I know loads of you have been like, Martin, where are the baby blankets? They're here. So let me quickly show off the baby blankets. So we'll start with Noah's because he was born first. So nephew number one has this gorgeous bluey gray. And I'll just come closer so you can see a little bit of the detail. So this is the second lace design. Uh, which I think is called Kisses. And then this is the first lace design with these lovely triangles. Um, and then there's a twisted cable border that runs all the way along. And of course, baby's name. So we've got an N for Noah. And if I just hold it back, so I'm gonna slide back. It is four by four. And I am just super, 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 super pleased with this project. So we've got this lovely um, gray color, which is Tin Man. We've got a blue, which name is escaping me at the moment. And Splash, which is this bluey white mild effect. Um, this wool is all West Yorkshire Spinners Bow Peep in their double knit. Bow Peep also have a finger in four ply weight, um, but this is in double knit. So each of the squares, I think I've shown off in previous videos, they were all knit separately. So I did all of the pattern ones on Noah and Thea's blanket. Then I did all the pattern twos. Then I did all the borders and then I've done all the sewing up. And then I thought I was finished. And I was just going to do the final sewing up. <laughs> and then I had like this much of the border left to go. My border, when I was sewing it on, obviously it was shrinking down the blanket. Whereas I, I just kind of loosely laid down. I was like, that, that's enough. And I wasn't. So I kind of, I was like, oh, completely defeated. I thought I'd finish and I hadn't. Um, and I'd measured the pink border with the blue border. And they were both too short. <laughs> but I'd only realised when I'd like sewn it onto here. So I... It's kind of like knitting, border and sewing on at the same time, which was a big, massive faff. But I really wish you could squish this yarn. And if you ever get a chance to use the West Yorkshire Spinners Bow Peep, absolutely not a sponsored video. I've used it a lot with baby projects. Um, Olivia, niece two's blanket is made in Bow Peep. Um, I've made other baby blankets for friends. I've made jumpers and cardigans. It washes 
so well. It has got a little bit of nylon in it, which makes it um, really user friendly for parents. Um, no hand washing. So this is absolutely able to go in the washing machine, which is what they need. You know, I love to make hand knits for them. All of my family are knit worthy, but no one wants to be hand washing. And I would really, I'd get a bit stressed, I think, about oh, they've spilt something. How do we wash it? Give it back to me. I'll wash it. Like if the ba baby has an accident, baby has an accident, it can go in the washing machine. So this wool is super and it's so soft. Now it's all been washed and blocked out. Um, yeah, I kind of want my own blanket. So that's Noah's finished. And then we have Thea's, which is the exact same blanket. So um, holding the squares up again. So we've got the, the second lace pattern and the first lace pattern, um, obviously in cream and pink, which is piglet. Um, this is carousel, then is the Marley effect one. Although the blue in Noah's is much more white and blue, um, like a mild effect. This one has pinks, greys and creams in it. If I hold it back, you can, you can see the striping. Um, and then, of course, the same simple pink border. And then we have a T for Thea. So if I just slide back slightly, you can see the finished blanket for Thea. So the sun has now decided to come out, which I think is okay for you to see off the blanket. So there we go. The blankets are finished. <laughs> like it's been a long time. I'm trying to work out when I bought the wool. August, September time. I was all on track. It's going to be great. I'm going to make the blankets before they're born. Who am I kidding? They're three months now. Exactly. So it's fine. Um, I joked my, my one brother went, where are the blankets? And I was like, mm, they haven't been finished yet. He went, are they going to get them before the 18? I was like, rude. Um, and I went, um, Adriana, niece one, was nine months when she had hers. So technically, I'm six months ahead of Adriana's schedule. I think niece two, I was a lot more organised. And I obviously was only making one when I made Olivia's. I've made two at the same time. Um, with Olivia's, I had it all done apart from the, the, the letter square because they didn't know what they were going to call her. So everything was done. It was all sewn up as well. I just needed to insert the letter. So I think she was like two days old when she had hers. But I kind of scrumpled them up now. <laughs> or maybe that needs to be a thumbnail. Um, but yes, I'm super, super, super happy. Um, if you're interested in what the reverse looks like, um, I'm a big fan of mattress stitch. I learned it a few years ago and now I just use it to sew everything up. Um, so I mattress stitched all of the edges. So it's an invisible, it's quite a seamless join on the right side. Um, and then you just have this ridge that appears on the reverse. Um, the pattern, so I talked about the wall. The pattern is by Martin Story. And it was a knit along that Martin did for Rowan. It was in 2014. And I know it was in 2014 because I used this when I made um, Adriana's blanket. This was the very first thing I ever knit. Right? I don't know, tell a lie. I made a scarf. We all make scarves, don't we? When we're learning to knit. And then I taught myself properly to knit to make this for Adriana. Um, and... The pattern was uh, for Rowan. It used to be a free pattern. And when I've been talking about it in previous videos, a few of you have messaged me to say that it's no longer available. Um, it was a paid for pattern. Then it was a free pattern. I honestly, you know, it, free patterns from public, uh, public publication houses, publishing houses, um, drop them an email, drop them a line and ask them, you know, and I think if enough of you were interested in and you wanted the pattern, maybe they will make it available free again or even a paid for pattern, but there were 10 different designs, I think. So of course I've just used two of the motifs. So there were two lace patterns. So I've got the two lace motifs in my blanket, but there were twisted cables and 3D knit pull triangle designs and that kind of thing. So it was a really lovely knit along. Um, I didn't join in that. I saw the pattern 
um, and then chose just a couple of the squares to do Adriana's blanket. But it's really lovely now that all of the babies, and the brothers do say this is it, so all the babies, the four babies, have baby blankets. Um, I have jokes, if they any of them decide to have more babies, um, they need to spread them out because having done two at the same time was just a little bit stressful. Um, but I hope that you don't mind me indulging in a little bit of baby blanket love because I know lots of you have been chatting about the baby blankets. Where are they? Are they finished? That could be the thumbnail. I'm going for options, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm super, super happy with how they turned out. Um, I finished them and I told my brothers that they were done, but they couldn't have them because I needed to show them off to you all. So you've seen them before the brothers and the family have seen them. Um, so I'm hoping on the weekend now I will get to go and see the babies and give them the blankets. So there we go. So that is two finished objects. So I'm going with four finished objects for the month. Even though on my whip list, it only goes down by three. But that's okay. It's all in the accounting. I know that these were a lot of love. And I'm really happy. So that's the finished objects. Um, and then projects that I started, I probably should count the chicks. I'll add them to my list. So when I do my end of year wrap up, all the things I made, I don't forget that I made the chicks an Easter hat. So we'll count that one as a finished object as well. So actually we'll go for five finished objects because I made the little chicks. Um, and then the project that I started in the month, which I haven't got very far. <laughs> I've done the baby blankets. I'm, I keep telling myself, I, I don't feel like I've done, I've not made much progress on anything else, but I have finished all of these and the blankets. Um, I have started again, so two videos ago, I talked about my um, Toft um, Women Who Made History and I was going to start with Emmeline Pankhurst. So I started Emmeline and I've made lots of progress, as you can see, and <laughs> here she is. Um, this is a body. And I was doing a little bit of this on my lunch hour in work. I was grabbing 15 minutes for a quick sandwich or 20 minutes or one day I did have an hour. Um, and then I got as far as this, realised I didn't have any stuffing with me in work. So I couldn't stuff the body to then go on and do the neck and the head. I put stuffing in my project bag and then didn't have any time in work to do anymore. So um, poor Emmeline has not made much progress at all. Um, I'm going to be working on Emmeline for the rest of this week. I've decided. So um, I mentioned in the the Toft Women Who Made History video that I'm running a crochet along. And if any of you follow me over on Instagram, you will have probably seen my crochet along um, posts. It's an unofficial um, Toft doll along, if you like. Um, but Kerry has very kindly given me some patches to give away as prizes. Um, the Crochet Long was running from the second week in March till the end of April. So I want to finish Emmeline this month. Um, I'm obviously not eligible to win my own patch prizes. Um, I will be giving them away. Although I do have the patches already, so I don't really need them. But, um, so I will be giving the patches away, but I want to be able to finish a doll. I did set expectations in March. I was like, oh, when we go to Centre Parks, I'm going to finish Emmeline and I'm going to start the Queen. I didn't do anything on Emmeline, but I did finish Snee. So, so I started this and I'm hoping to finish this in the month so that I have my first doll under my belt. Um, so I've got everything that I need now in here, all of the wool, a hook. Um, this is living in, um, this is a velvet luxury bag from Jenna of The Little Grey Girl. Again, if you've been here a while, you know this is not a sponsored video. I just love Gemma's bags. Um, so I now have everything that I need in here. So I can pick it up and go if I need to, um, or I want to be able to do some crochet um, during work time. So that was my only cast on, crochet on, hook on. What do we say with crochet? I cast on. So I cast on with knitting. What do I do with crochet? I've never thought about that. 
Anyway, um, this was the only thing that I started in April. Wasn't I good? I have told myself, now I've finished the blankets, I've got a couple of things nearly finished, and then we can start some new jumpers. I'm very excited. I need to do some knitting. I feel like I've done a lot of crochet lately. I feel like you've seen a lot of crochet. Um, so I've got a lot of knitting that I want to get done. So we'll get that doll sorted. Um, the other things that I did work on in March when I needed a bit of a um, a bit of a respite or I, I had a, a day trip to the office um, in London. So um, I took a sock on the train with me. So this is um, a simple vanilla sock that I'm making for Mark. I'm going to do it as a tube and insert uh, an afterthought heel. This is the Rocker Bunny. No. Rocker Bunny mashup. Um, so this wool is just gloriously neon vibrant um, by Attic Spin Dye. Um, so we have the black on the cuff. Um, I think I've got about half an inch and then I'm going to switch back to the black to do the toe and then that's sock one done um, and then when I've done sock two I will put the heels in. Um, I'm going to Wonderwall Yarn Festival in a couple of weeks time and I hoped that I would get these finished so that I could take them because Andy and Angela from Attic Spin Dye are exhibiting at Wonderwall. And I love a show and tell. If you're going to a yarn show and you know that um, a designer or a dyer um, for a product that you love is go or that you've used is going to be there. I think it's great to be able to take it along and show them what you've made with their wool. Um, so I basically got two weeks to finish this sock and knit a second one on top of everything else. So this is not going to happen. Angela, I know you do watch some of my videos and you do often comment. I will bring it with me. We might have one finished. I'm definitely not going to get the second one done. No, that's going to be too much. But I've done a little bit on that. So that's nearly sock one done. I have got another. Um, this, this is the second part of the Rocker Bunny, um, which you can see the lovely neons and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to just keep checking in with these. And eventually Mark will have two pairs of socks. But not for this month. Um, and then, so that's the that, that's the two things that I worked on during March, and I will continue to check in on those in April. Um, as I said, I'm going to spend the rest of this week, so the first week in April, on Emmeline to try and make a lot of progress on her. And then, really exciting, and this is genuinely exciting, so the two projects that I've selected to work on during April, excuse me, the two projects that I'm going to work on during April, um, one of them is in this extra large London bag by German of the Little Grey Girl. I'm not going to show you. I'm not. It is using this wool, which is by Colour Lab. It's a double knit and it is my bubble sweater. You can see a sleeve. Um, I've talked about this project before. Um, it is a bubble sweater by West Knits, and it is obviously a dark grey jumper with light grey bubbles. But I am slightly larger chested, and I wasn't sure that I liked busy patterns. I made Mark a bubble sweater. I was like, oh, I'd really love a bubble sweater. But then I worried that it would be too fussy, and I wouldn't like it, and I wouldn't wear it. So I was like, I was chatting at Knit Club one night, and Jenny said to me, well, why don't you just do one, but stick it and make it into a cardigan? I said, I've never done that. That sounds fun. So that's what I'm doing. So I have, this was just before lockdown. I got so engrossed in this project. I did the whole thing in like three weeks. Honestly, I speed knit whoom, down, did the body, then the sleeves. And then lockdown happened and the shop closed for lockdown. We weren't allowed out and I've just not picked this back up and got to the shop. However, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to Wonderwall um, at the end of April. And I think I said it in a previous video, I've been very, very lucky um, to have been asked to go and work on the Ammonite Yarn stall for the weekend. So I get to go and play at being a knit shop 
person, um, which I'm super, super excited about. So I've taken Friday off work. We're going up on Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, the show is Saturday, Sunday. So I'm going to help with the load in um, and setting up the exhibition um, and the stand, etc. cetera. Um, but I really want to bring this with me because Colour Lab is wool that Ammonite Yarns sell. So I thought, oh, I could be a model on the stand. I'm going to bring this one with me as well. This is my Rory cardigan by West Yorkshire Spinners in their Croft. So I'm gonna take this with me as well, but I'd love to be able to take this. So I have to take this to Ammonite because I just need to stick it. I just need to stick it, cut your knitting. Um, but I've no idea, I've, I've done a sticking course. I get the concept, I know what I need to do, but I'm not brave enough to do it on my own. I want to do, I'm gonna do a crochet stick. Um, and I want to be able to do the crochet chain all the way up. And then I want to be able to give it to Jenny and just say, is it right? Have I missed a stitch? Is it secure? And then I can cut it. So um, Jenny's on holiday this week, so I can't do that this week, which is why I'm going to carry on working on Emmeline. But you might see my long awaited bubble cardigan, not bubble sweater, um, in April. And um, it's slightly cringy now, I think, but I am quite excited to share with you my very, very, very first video. Um, the video that you've seen here as my very first video wasn't actually my very first video. I started recording my progress as a project vlog on my bubble knit. Um, and there's some very questionable footage. I've lost a bit of weight since I started that. There's a really big beard as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, I will, I want to finish recording that when I do the steak. Um, two years has passed and then you'll see that I look different. Um, but I want to be able to finish this. So there should hopefully be a project video come in later in April as well, which will be dedicated to my bubble sweater. So I'm excited to get this one going. And then this has been a long project. This has been on my needles for over two years now because I started it before the pandemic. So I'm hoping that this one is going to see the light of day in April. If you are going to be at Wonderwall, please come and say hello. I will be on the Ammonite stall for most of the day, apart from when I've managed to duck off to go do some yarn shopping. Because we all need more wool, right? But like Tofter there, for example. So I'm going to go and buy some black wool so I can make my birds. I need to buy some wool. That's what I can tell myself. Um, and then the other project which lots of you will be very happy to see, including Mark. The other project that I'm going to work on during April is... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Mark's Argyle sweater. So this is the back. This is Intarsia. Please excuse the bird's nest. It's the easiest way to do it, where you just have long lengths of yarn and you just keep twisting them around rather than having all the little bobbins moving when you have so many different colors. Um, this has been in hibernation for, it's not quite 12 months, but it's probably about 10 months. I think May, May, June time last year was the last time that I started work on this. Um, and I've promised Mark, I did promise him in January, but I did caveat with January after I finished the baby blankets. Then it was February after I finished the baby blankets. You can see where I'm going. Now the baby blankets are finished. I said he can do this, but I do want to do this to go to Wonderwall. So he's okay with that. I, I We have agreed. So at some point this month, I'm going to find out where I am in my pattern. And I'm going to try and dust this off. So I think, so this is the back. And Mark's only little. So I think I've got another two pattern repeats which I think that's, a, I think the full repeat is, at, yeah, the full repeat is from the dark to the cream. That's one repeat. So I think I've got to finish this repeat and then I have two repeats to go. And then that's the back done. Um, and then I do the same on the front, apart from splitting here for the V-neck. And then it's just short sleeves because it's a tank top. So it shouldn't take me that long. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, if you haven't seen this project before, it is in John Arben Textiles Alpaca Supreme, which is a 40% British Alpaca, 40% Falklands Merino and 20% silk. It is luxurious. And I do feel really bad because Mark bought this wool in Wonderwool 
five years ago. It was waiting to see what it was going to become and when it would become it. Um, but also in my defence, it's on really teeny tiny needles. It's on a 3.25 mil needle. And I I prefer doing my intaglia like this back and forth on a straight needle because um, on a long cable to knit back and forth, I felt like the cable was another thing to get caught up in the bird's nest. So I'm hoping it won't, this will not be finished in April. So I have told Mark... And those of you that are excited to see this project, please lower your expectations because this is not going to get done in April. But I'm not going to become an, a monogamous knitter. I need variety. And you know me, I get very easily distracted. But if I can work on this in April and into May and maybe into June, he will have it. He thinks April. It won't be. Um, I will get it done. It's, it's, it's moving up the list. There's no other jumpers that I'm going to do apart from this. When I finish that one, I might cast on a new jumper if I need a bit of variety because I can't really knit this in front of the tally because it's too complicated. So I, I might need a simple project. We'll see. So that is my April plans. So I think I've got enough to be going on. So I've got four, only four things. Only four things I'm going to do in April, which I think is, is, is fine. There's a story. And, oh, sorry, I'm not the camera. And some of those are obviously quicker than others. Like, seriously, my bubble sweater just needs to be cut. And then where I cut it, I just need to pick up and do um, a very short, it's probably about this this much, a two inch, inch and a half button band, straight down, straight down, and that's it, it's done. So the steak in itself will probably, I don't know, an hour, maybe two hours to do the, the crochet and then cut it. And then I've just got two straight button bands because I've already done a collar. Um, it's a round neck collar. So it's just having a, um, a simple band. So I don't think there's a lot of knitting left on that one. I've done all the sleeves. I've done it all. We'll see. Um, so please let me know what you think about the projects that I've got coming up in April. And also let me know what you think about my finished objects. Um, and also, what did you finish in March? Let me know. And, and as always, tag me in your finished makes. If you put your photos on Instagram um, or Twitter, please tag me in them. I'd love to see the other side of the camera and see what you have finished. Um, so the final bit then for video is acquisitions. Um, so I have some new wool. <laughs> of course I do. Let me take this out. Excuse the rustling. So... This is um, by Trilogy Yarns, and I have to blame um, Reese of Glasgow Yarns on Instagram for this purchase. Um, he Reese saw um, someone had posted this skein of yarn, and he sent it to me. He went, "This is a wicked skein of yarn from a musical theatre dye club." What am I to do? So thank you, Reese, for corrupting me. Um, so I hopped on to Trilogy Yarns and they didn't have any in the shop. So I messaged um, the dyer, Hazel, and said, hi. Um, it turned out Hazel actually watches the videos, watches my blog, which was amazing. And Hazel said, I have some of the Wicked colorway left. Would you like some? So I said, yes, please. So Hazel popped it online and I was able to purchase it. Um, I was thinking about one and then I thought, well, maybe I'll get two because to make a nice shawl for me, like a dotted raise from West Knits or something like that, I probably need two. But she only had three. So I couldn't really leave the one lone scheme, could I? So I bought all three. Um, but it is the Wicked colorway from um, Trilogy Yarns Musical Theatre or mus Musicals um, Dye Club. And of course, we've got this lovely pinks for Glinda and the moody, stormy greys and the greens of Elphaba and Oz. And again, if you've been here a while, you know I am obsessed with the musical Wicked. Um, and I just couldn't leave it there, basically. So I have three skeins of this. They're going to ruminate in my stash for a while. I'm not sure what they're going to be yet. I am currently thinking a two skein shawl would show off these colours lovely and something simple like a dotted raise that's got quite a simple pattern or a storm shawl by Hoey Locatelli. 
something like that with a really simple pattern that will show off the colorway. And then maybe one will become a, a yoke in a sweater, for example. So maybe, you know, not necessarily a bubble knit, but, you know, a, a, a color changing yoke into a dark gray body, something like that is currently where, I, where my head is at. So I think it's gonna be a two skein shawl and a one skein yoke. But of course, now you see the yarn, if you have any thoughts or pattern recommendations, please do a Reese and feel free to corrupt me. I am always up for being corrupted. Um, so yeah, so I have those, that's the, that's the only new one I bought. I promise. Um, and then the other, um, it's a acquisition, but not a stash top up. It is another book for the pattern collection. So this is the newly released dogs book by Kerry Lord of Toft. And I'm super excited because this also comes with another patch. Because you know I'm addicted to the patches. So I will make um, Rosie the Dachshund at some point she will go on my patch making list but this book gives you 65 canine projects um and it as with all of carrie's books it takes you right from the very beginning about the different materials um that you can use how much wool you need to make the different patterns yarn sizes to go from double knit to aaron to chunky um, and of course, all the patterns are then included within the book, each beautifully photoed. So this is Andreas the Moody. Um, and of course, they've all got little stories and little characters that, that bring, the, bring them to life. And then in the back, there are techniques. So um, I purchased this um, because every purchase came with a patch. <laughs> And also, I've said before, I'm a bit of a magpie, so I like to have one of everything. So I've got most of Kerry's books already. I've been lucky to build up my collection over the last four or five years. So um, great to have another one added. And who knows, someone someday will say to me, could you make me a doll? Probably. Let me look in my dog book. Uh, a doll? A dog. Let me look in my dog book. Oh, look at Philip the King Charles Spaniel. Super cute. Um, the really, really cute one. Let me see if I can quickly find him. I'm not going to make him for my patch project because I'll make Rosie the Dachshund. But if I... Where is he? Bear with. Da, da, da. Talk to myself. Oh. Tucker the Jack Russell. Super, super cute. Um, so, yeah. So, I've added that to my collection um in the last month and that's it i did say i wasn't buying any yarn but oh look it's emerald green it's wicked pink it's gonna be lovely that that'll I said it's gonna ruminate in my stash for a while um and that's it i think so this has been a bit of a whirlwind video um i love doing my monthly wrap-ups because there's hopefully something for everybody because I talk about my finished objects and what I've been up to. Um, I know the last couple of project specific vlogs have been quite crochet heavy so I'm hoping and looking forward to getting my bubble sweater sorted out in April. So that's hopefully coming up on the channel later this month and I have also agreed with Jenny and Ruth um, from Ammonite Yarns that I'm going to do a little Wonderwall blog about confessions of not a yarn shop owner kind of thing. Um, so a bit of a behind the scenes of my time working with Ammonite at Wonderwall. So I'm really excited. Um, I work in financial services. I have an office job, nine to five, Monday to Friday. My knitting and crafting is my creative outlet. It's my hobby. Um, but so to be able to do something completely different and go and experience um, what small business owners experience and seeing the other side of a knitting show, yarn show, is going to be really, really excited. So if you are at Wonderwall, please come along and say hello. I should be on the Ammonite stand. Um, but hopefully two more videos coming up then in April for my bubble knit and my Wonderwall. 
Um, and that's probably it. I think I'm gonna, we're, we're under an hour, which is always lame. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I wanna cover. We've, we've talked through a lot. I feel super proud of my March progress with my finished objects and getting those baby blankets finished. Um, we did the um, the community shout out right at the beginning. So if you are able to support um, the campaign and you can whip up some orange flowers, um, as I said, the Ammonite Yarns address is below along with um, some information about the campaign. Um, please feel free to just start whipping up some um, flowers and popping them in the post to Ammonite, to the lovely Jenny. Um, and if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. But I just thought there might be something nice for us to try and get behind as a community and such a great um, such a great initiative to raise awareness um, for quite a really sort of sobering and, and important cause. So yeah, let's see how we get on. I'll be getting on, getting through some flowers as well, I'm sure, during April um, and the coming months. So I'm gonna leave this video there um, thank you very much, as always, for being here and sticking with me. Um, I really do appreciate the support. There's over 5,000 of you now subscribed to my channel, which I keep saying I'm just blown away by all of your support. I can't thank you enough for being here and giving me the support that you do, um, which is just fantastic. So if you have enjoyed what you've watched today and you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It helps me to keep growing my channel. And please leave me a comment. Let me know what you're what you're working on. And yeah, I hope that you're all keeping well and have lots of time for crafting. Um, so I'll leave it there. And until we speak again, happy crafting. Mm -hmm.